my name is Makoto Ikeda. I'm talk going to talk about image sensors. This is the outline of my talk. So I'll cover the basics of image sensors, including CCD and CMOS image sensors, global shutters and lowering shutters, front-side illuminated image sensors, and back-side illuminated image sensors, as well as stacked image sensors. And as for the key for the performance metrics, of the image sensors, I'll uh, talk about current parallel converter designs, and I'm going to summarize my talk. So basics of image sensors are like this. So any kind of uh, PN junction becomes the uh, image sensors. So photons coming into the, uh, the depleted PN junctions Photon-induced electrons, whole pairs, will be uh, uh, attracted by the strong electric field in either the node. So uh, that uh, collect the photo-induced signals and can become the image sensors. But uh, uh, for the ordinary uh, PN junctions, the interfaces causes some dark current. So to prevent that, highly doped uh, P -li layers are formed, we call buried photodiode, to decrease the uh, dark current. Or in some cases, instead of using depletion layers, we put undoped intrinsic layers, so-called PIN photodiode. So basics of CMOS image sensor pixels are like this. So usually we use three or four transistors per pixel. So name, uh, we use reset transistors, transfer gate, and source for reader amplifiers. The basic operation is as shown. So when uh, we reset, reset transistors and transfer gate are turned on, and the photodiode node PD and floating diffusion node FD will be reset onto a certain level. During exposure time, the PD node uh, photodiode will uh, uh, discharge the PD node, and after the exposure time, the charges onto the photodiode node will be transferred to floating diffusion node. At this point, uh, we uh, transfer the charges 100% from PD to FD. And then the F charges on the FD will be read out through the uh, source, um, source for amplifiers. Sometimes uh, to make the pixel size smaller, we share the source for amplifiers among several pixels. So if you share the uh, by four pixels, the effective number of transistors per pixels becomes 1.75. That uh, results in smaller size of pixels. The difference between CCD and CMOS image sensors are, are shown here. So basically, uh, CCD image sensors stored uh, charges are read out through uh, CCD uh, charge coupled devices as a bucket brigade, brigade manner. On the other side, for CMOS image sensors, ch uh, stored charges are read out row by row through, uh, through column lines in parallel. So you can realize that the uh, CMOS image sensors having a much higher bandwidth. Hence, CCD, when the number of pixels become larger, uh, frame rate will be uh, degraded. But CMOS image sensors, frame rate will not so degraded even having a larger number of pixels. That is one of the advantage of CMOS image sensors. For global shutter and rolling shutters, global shutter uh, exposure for all the pixels at the same time and read out uh, pixel by pixel. So there will be no uh, image distortions. But on the other side, you need additional readout channel or charge storage. On the other side, rolling shutter, you will expose and read out uh, row by row. So this results in a simpler uh, pixel controlling. But on the other side, the time uh, taken on this line and this line are different. So if you are going to take uh, 
moving object, motion blur will happen. So you will see slant of uh, the pictures. For front side illuminated image sensors and back side illuminated image sensors, usually the photodiodes and transistors are formed onto the, the surface of uh, silicon substrate. Above that, you will have the wiring. So light need to uh, travel through the long distance as like this. So that causes the, uh, the uh, light uh, degradation. On the other side, if you flip the uh, silicon substrate and the illuminated light coming from the back side of the uh, this substrate, there, there is no obstruct like shown here. So a uh, few factor that is the ratio of photodiode or, and uh, uh, total pixel area becomes 100%. But on the other side, because there are no uh, walls like uh, metal wiring, so optical signals or electrical signals are easily a crosstalk to the adjacent pixels. So to cope with that, we need to have uh, optical and electrical shielding in between the pixels. Also, uh, to form this kind of structures, mechanical substrate is essential. But this substrate can become another chip, like an uh, converter or signal processors. Key performance of immune sensors are listed here. So sensitivity is one very important uh, parameter. And qu quantum efficiency, uh, that is the how many electrons induced by the photons, uh, one of the, the important parameters. Also, conversion gain. How, how much voltage signals you can get from the single electron are uh, very important. Then, noises are also very important. So there can be several kinds of noises. One is uh, noise induced at the photodiode level. That is dark current and optical short noise. And also amplifier causes uh, noises like reset noise, one of IF noise, summer noise, and so on and so forth. And sometimes the amplifier gain variation causes a fixed pattern noise. So how much uh, signal ranges you can capture is called dynamic range of image sensors. And usually the dynamic range is around 60 dB to 8 TDB. But if you utilize uh, several techniques like logarithm, compression, or uh, multiple exposures, you can go up to 200 dBs. Spatial resolution is also very important, and uh, currently the, the com consumer electronics can go up to 100 megapixels. For specific scientific applications, 400 megapixels is also realized. Frame rate is also important for a high speed moving object. Sometimes 480 frames per second is already realized, but for specific scientific applications, 20 megapixel frames per second uh, image sensors have been uh, reported. One of the key parameters for realizing high performance CMOS image sensors are current power aided converters. So there have been several proposals like using single strobe type, cyclic type, or sigma delta type. So uh, this is one example using single slope edited converters. This is a very clever idea proposed by Sony. So this can the realize correlated double sampling twice in analog domain and digital domain. So once uh, while uh, sampling these signals, the correlated double sampling is carried out to subtract noises induced by the pixels and reset level. Also, um, reset level is sampled and uh, down counted using single slope mana. And signals are, after signals are sampled, A2D converters are acted as a up count. And then reset levels are automatically uh, eliminated. So this is a summary. So, Pixel size has, has scaled down to one micron, 
and but that uh, becomes almost the diffraction limit. So for further scaling of the pixel sizes, uh, you need to cope with the diffraction limit somehow. More pixel, faster frame rate for the better presence, like uh, 8K videos. But uh, to realize that, one of the key issues is uh, faster readout speed. At this moment, mo mo moment, 50 gigabit per second readout speed have been already reported. Low noise characteristics are very important pa parameter as well. So right now, it becomes almost one electron or below one electron uh, readout noise are uh, reported by sophisticated low noise signal chain using uh, low noise pixels, low noise readout circuit, correlated double sampling, and low noise current power ADD converters. Also, wider dynamic range or global shuttering are very important. So uh, this, in this very size symposium, paper number 22.1 uh, cope with uh, innovative global shuttering uh, techniques. Also, higher functionality like uh, detecting features or depths or ranges becomes also very important. So thank you very much, very much. <laughs>